What's going on guys and welcome back to the Honeystead. I have got, I've got to laugh at this because yeah, <laughs> my, my interesting landscaping or lack of landscaping um, that I have outside of my house. Now, when we moved into here, it had gorgeous landscaping all along the front and it's still, it's still pretty, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's one thing that I just haven't really tended to that much other than cut the grass. Um, but I want to show you this because I think it's absolutely, it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> um, look at, look at this. <laughs> I did not plant these on purpose. And then all of these, minus that, all of those, <laughs> look. <laughs> well, those beautiful little leaves <laughs> that are growing in my well-manicured front walkway area, that is called burdock or Arctium lapa. It's greater burdock. We use burdock medicinally as well as you can eat the root when the energy from the leaves so more towards the fall so right now all the energy is going from the roots all the way to the leaves because it's spring but come this fall the energy changes that's about when you harvest not only is burdock medicinal but it is edible too and it is one of the top fives that i would say get to know familiarize yourself with it if you have it growing in your area so you might have come across that plant before uh, mainly in the fall uh, when you're walking around and you get these burrs on you they're like that spiky little burr and they cling to you we typically will find them on our cat and I have a feeling that that is why that is why we have so many that are are growing right there because my daughter would brush our big fluffy white cat peaches right here in the front yard area so I have a feeling that 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 is why we have so many burdock that is growing right here I'm not going to get rid of it I'm going to let it grow we'll harvest um it's not doing any harm. It is a medicinal plant and it's edible. You can buy the root itself under the word gobo if you ever come across any, uh, any grocery store or market that sells kind of some rare, uh, rare vegetables, but it's a long root. We have cooked it. You can saute it up. You can dry it. You can use it in tincture form. You can decoct it. Now, when it comes to medicinal properties of burdock root, there are quite a few. Um, one, it's good for your lymphatic system. It's lovely for your liver. It's a detoxifier. It's also packed full of antioxidants. Um, because it's good for your liver, then it's also good for your skin and, and overall just how your body works together. When you start doing your research on burdock root, you're gonna see that it has quite a bit of, of benefit to your digestive system, mainly because what burdock root, when you, when you ingest it, when you eat it, that the fibers in that burdock root act like a prebiotic for your gut health. So it's, it's feeding the good bacteria in your gut and giving them what they need to in, ten, in turn just keep your whole digestive system good and healthy. That's a short way, but I do want you to do your research on, on, uh, on reading about burdock root because it's one that, one that you can use in multiple different, multiple different ways as well as if you needed to, to harvest from the wild to, to have food, that is an option. And, and once you find some burrs this next season, this next fall, you know, sprinkle them in an area that you might want to grow some burdock root. Uh, the root itself, once you dig it up, clean it up, it can be quite long. Um, I freeze dried burdock root just to just to have that. I've got that video. I'll put that I'll put that above for you if you're interested in that. But um, yeah, do some reading about burdock root. It's probably one of my top five that I would have for medicinal properties as well as for a a source of food that's growing 
two steps outside my, my front door. And it's not one that I planted and it's not one that I tended to. And right now I am, I have a burdock root landscape that is, I didn't pay for. <laughs> so I've had a few people ask about purple dead nettle. I have a video out, I will put that down below for you all because this is the season of harvesting. Um, but this is purple dead nettle. It is lovely, a uh, lovely little medicinal plant, but the, the top starts to, to turn a little purple, hence the reason why. But beside it is uh, actually a type of ground ivy. And I got a little honeybee. I can hear her. She's among the flowers. <laughs> But anyways, this is a ground ivy. Also has some medicinal properties as well. Um, you can use it respiratory, urinary, uh, something you might wanna, might wanna look into. But I wanted to show you the difference because this one gets often confused with, uh, purple dead nettle gets often confused with uh, ground ivy as well as henbit. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest Sorry, little girl, I won't take your flower, I promise. She's down there. So I'm gonna harvest one of each and I've got some henbit that we can look at the difference between all of them. This is henbit. I wasn't sure if we were gonna have any left because my chickens absolutely love eating, eating henbit. This might be a little bit easier to identify now that I took them off of the, the grass and you can actually really truly look at the difference between the plants. But this one is purple dad nettle. You can see it's a little hard right now, but right the typically the top is what gets what turns purple. It is a square stem. You can see it has uh, different leaves that are, are alternating and then the flowers are typically up here. Um, now purple dead nettle does have medicinal properties, anti-inflammatory, uh, it's an astringent. There are a few different things that you can do with it, uh, but I'll make sure to put that video of, of me uh, harvesting some purple dead nettle and really getting into detail about it below. And then I also have, I've got to track that one down too, um, but I can tag that one as well for the ground ivy. You can see, you can clearly see the difference in the leaves from um, purple dead nettle to, to a ground ivy. See how it's kind of toothed a little bit. Um, flowers are also at the top. The texture of the leaf is, is smoother versus a little, I feel like the dead nettle has like a fuzzy, velvety feeling. And then you have henbit. Flowers are up at the top, and they these all three grow around the same time, um, but they all have something that they that they offer. So that might help you guys on your foraging adventure uh, by being able to determine exactly which one's which. So henbit, ground ivy, and purple dead nettle. Look them up; you'd be surprised. And now's the time. But I will tag these two. I have videos, I believe, on these two. I don't know if I did one on henbit yet. We might have to plan on that. It's lovely in a salad and the chickens love it too. That's an easy one. Here's a better patch of henbit, a little bit younger, but you can see how the leaves, the leaves are way different. And the flowers, the flowers are on top. So pretty, the chickens haven't found this patch yet. Since we're talking about medicinal plants, it's been a few weeks since we have gone and checked on all of our plant babies growing inside the greenhouse. So I gotta go up there, open up some windows since it's starting to warm up. And I wanted to take you guys and kind of show you, show you what's going on with them. The bees are all flying. I need to get in there and take you guys with me on a, on a, a bee date soon. A lot of change since you guys have been in here last. I'm gonna try to give you a, a good, quick update about these plants because they're growing very, very nicely. This big old patch is my unruly chamomile. I have not quite thinned it out, but we're gonna do that when we go to uh, when we go to transplant. But all of this is chamomile. It's one of my favorite 
favorite flowers that we use medicinally. Chamomile is a lovely anti-inflammatory. It's a nervine, it's a sedative. It's gonna help kinda drift you off to sleep. And then over here, this is all, um, this is all catnip or catmint, also used in a tea form. Uh, very nice for crankiness. <laughs> So we will we will harvest the the leaves and and use that um, the flowers for the chamomile tincture dry them I'm very excited we're gonna try to freeze dry chamomile flowers this year and then of course we're we are going to definitely freeze dry um, freeze dry some of the the cat mint not exactly in the medicinal garden but you know food is medicine check out all my happy little tomato plants I'm coming in here and just kind of Moving them around a little bit, this is gonna help strengthen. Uh, the temperature is still dropping at night, so I'm keeping the windows closed. But during the day, I try to open up all the windows and let as much airflow come in because that is what makes a healthy, strong, happy tomato plant. And we have a few different varieties. Um, Bromas, I've got uh, Mortgage Lifters, Dr. Witchies, uh, Lemon Boys, Purple Boys, Beef Steak, Solar Flare, and one of my favorites over here is the pork chop, pork chop tomato. Look at all of our, our baby motherwort. So motherwort is one of our, our favorites that we, we will have here. It's good for the cardiovascular, good for the heart, and everybody could use a little bit of mother. And then I have some hyssop that is growing right behind it. And it looks like I've got some little chamomile that kind of snuck in. So we'll be, we'll be fixing that there as well. Next is lemon balm. So lemon balm is also uh, very lovely. I, I actually just did a video about lemon balm and hibiscus with freeze dried lemons. But in short, lemon balm is, is very good for if you have a little anxiety, if you just need something to kind of take the edge off, it's very, it's delicious, honestly. And it, it just, it brings, it, it helps with little, like if you have like an anxious stomach, it's also very uplifting. So it's great for your mood. Then the whorehound is really starting to pop up too. We're gonna try this year to make some whorehound candy. And then I've spoken before about fever few. Um, we freeze dried fever few. I actually eat the leaves every every so often. Uh, really, when I know I'm getting ready to have a headache, uh, I, I tend to have constricting headaches. So fever few is a vasodilator. Um, so that might you might you might want to look into that if you have those type of headaches. But anyways. The leaves kind of taste like aspirin. The flower kind of looks like a little combination between a daisy, but yes, lovely fever few. And then the holy basil is starting to pop up. Holy basil is one of my favorites. Holy basil is uh, an adaptogen herb. Um, not only is it the, the fragrance and the smell and the fact that it has such gorgeous gorgeous thousands and thousands of little flowers on it for our pollinators um, but holy basil is probably one of my my favorite adaptogen herbs that we put in our tea blends and it, it basically just helps you be able to adapt to different stressors uh, in short weather change just stress of all the things in life um, so if you're if you're you're feeding your adrenals and, and properly nourishing them, when you come up to, to situations that are a little bit stressful, um, it helps equip your body with the ability to kind of move through them, I guess is the short way. Uh, but it's, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we cook with it, we eat it, we add it in our teas. If you don't know holy basil, I want you to. I want you to look up holy basil. Uh, I think this is grass. <laughs> I don't know if I planted that, um, but right here, those are butterfly, 
butterfly peas. Now we use the flowers in tea. It actually is quite beautiful. It's almost purple. Well, the, the tea, the flowers are purple, which make the tea purple, but when you add lemon, it changes. You're probably gonna hear my dad and my son in the background. They are loading up the, the trailer right now. I've gotta go help them. We gotta load up a pig that is going, going away, going to a new home. <laughs> Again, we are a homestead. We work a lot all the time. So with that, you're going to hear stuff like this in the background <laughs> when I'm filming because we're not a movie set. <laughs> we are a homestead. Um, but the, the butterfly pea flower is gorgeous. I put out a video. I will also um, put that down below for you guys if you are interested in seeing how cool it changes. It's the craziest thing when you add lemon to butterfly pea um, because the pH changes, which changes the color from a very, very dark purple to a gorgeous magenta pink. It's a fun way to get people interested in into tea. It has medicinal properties as well. It's very good for your complexion. <laughs> um, so it's one of my favorites. Now, look at this. I was quite excited because I was like, I there is no way I'm going to learn how to grow hops, guys. But check this out. We have got all of these are some hops. So we're going to have some hop flowers that we're going to be harvesting. You can tincture the hop flowers. I've seen people, um, I've seen people actually use the hops in teas. I'm not a big fan of it in a tea form just because it's very hoppy like. It's very, it has, what well, I mean it's hops. It tastes like hops. But as a, as a sedative, um, it's quite interesting. So yeah, I'm doing it. We are doing it. I did not kill these, so I'm very proud of myself. And then I've had a lot of people ask about the passion flower, and not all of them have germinated. I would say, I don't think that that does not look like passion flower. That actually looks like a little piece of grass, but we've got one here, one here, here, and I would say here. These are our passion flower. These guys are probably going to be in, uh, gifts because I have that archway that is going to be um, very lush this year. So uh, very, very excited about passion flower. I've had some people ask about it and I, I wanted to keep you all posted about the passion flower because it does take a little longer to germinate. I didn't do anything special. I just put, put the seed in the soil. I didn't pre-soak it. I just... I just went with it. So, um, not the best germination rate, but at least we have some. And I have a feeling more and more are going to start popping up. So I'm not, I'm not calling it a loss. We're just going to wait. Look at the comfrey. So we are going to be using the root of, of comfrey. Um, we're going to be turning this into salves. This is great for for sprains, aches, uh, breaks, all of that. I would like you to do your research on some comfrey. Um, yes, this one is quite, quite amazing. Um, so do your research on the root. We're gonna be turning this one into a salve very soon. And then we have calendula. Calendula is going to also be used in an oil. Um, we're gonna make a, a lovely, face skin salve as well and then we've got some poppy some california poppy that we will be using medicinally as well um, we have california poppy we'll put it in into our teas it is very relaxing so interesting about california poppy and we have some marshmallow y'all i need to do a marshmallow cold infusion for you. Um, but we're gonna be using the, the root itself. Um, you can also use the leaves um, for a tincture form, but the root has such a mucilage to it. And it's very good for your digestive system. It's very cooling uh, and, and just, it's got some good stuff to offer. So a lot of people who might be experiencing some gut health, you might wanna look into into marshmallow root. 
um, as a cold infusion. It's lovely. Uh, it doesn't have much of a taste, but you can definitely see the mucilage when you soak it in, when you put the root and soak it in some cold, cold water. And what's nice is you can kind of keep adding a little bit of water to it as you go until you know that the mucilage is pretty much, until you pretty much use it out of it. So that is something. That and plantain, I want you to look up plantain. Broadleaf plantain. Look and see. You'd be surprised. It is literally growing all over the place, uh, but you can, you can eat it. You can use it as a, uh, to support yourself. And um, it's got some good stuff to offer. And it's growing, typically in gravel. And then we've got some pleurisy root. Um, this is mainly, I'm just gonna be planting just to, to let it plant, but it also has some medicinal properties, especially for your lung health. Um, but it's lovely for the pollinators, so these are just gonna kinda be just here. We're just gonna bring plants in just to just to have them here and then I'm being a little bit of a, a daredevil um, because we're gonna we're gonna try some ashwagandha now typically this is better for growing zones eight um, eight and up from what I have read we are grow zone 6b so look at it at least I got it started if I have to keep it into the high tunnel that's fine I don't mind um, but some ashwagandha, and then, um, what else, what else, what else? Some dill. I will be transplanting this. It is ready very soon. I need to finish my, finish cleaning up my garden beds. And then we've got some thyme, and the start of some oregano. I also have oregano growing out there. Um, some lavender, we're gonna, look, that one just popped up. And what else? A little more lavender, more thyme, some white sage, and some cilantro, and some rosemary. And all of your culinary herbs have medicinal properties too. I think that's the most amazing thing about uh, about herbal medicine is most of the most of the plants that you use to cook with have something that they can offer not just the flavor, not just the seasoning. So I definitely want you to, want you to read about it. Um, and then check out the hibiscus. I gotta transplant them. I don't know if they're happy in here, um, but we'll be doing that and check this little guy out. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to get it to grow, but that is, I've never really had good luck with Meadowsweet, but it just started popping up. Meadowsweet is a, quite lovely little anti-inflammatory and also offers offers some good bit for your gut health so read about it it's kind of cool and then I recently planted uh, St. John's wort we normally forage for St. John's wort but I wanted to make sure to start a bunch of seed and then I plan on growing some here in the medicinal garden as well as kind of just a little bit throughout the property. I'm gonna tell you, there's a story about St. John's Wort that I, it still is exciting. I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna go, we're gonna do this one probably up in the apothecary um, because it's such an interesting story about St. John's Wort and how it got its name and how it's considered it was named St. John in short to protect it. Um, so there's, this one is a good one. I want to, we're going to, we're going to do this very soon, actually. Um, yes, we're going to do this very soon. And then look right here, some valerian. This is the stinkiest plant, <laughs> not the leaves itself, but the root. Boy. It is stinky. Um, so I'll take you guys out. I actually have a really beautiful valerian plant that is starting to grow um, that overwintered. So I'll show you what it looks like as it as it grows. I'm going to let the one I have out there go to seed, go to flower so we can really experience it. And then I have a little bit of skull cap, one baby skull cap. And then I think the rest is cayenne peppers that I have growing and they just started some bell peppers and cayenne peppers. And then my lovely friend, look what she gifted me. She gifted me a whole bunch of interesting medicinal seed starts that she did. Um, that's, oh, look at that. That's a, a larger pleurisy root. 
and then some more motherwort. I love it. And uh, some sheep sorrel. <laughs> I love sheep sorrel. I'll tell you this, it, you, once you harvest the leaf um, and you eat it, it has a very limey flavor to it. It's very, it's actually really good. Some black whorehound and uh, Blanthes. This is growing. And uh, yeah, that's growing gorgeous. This was such a lovely gift that she, she brought over. So we're gonna give these babies homes. <laughs> I don't think the bees are gonna bother us too much, but if they do, I'll, I'll walk away. I don't have my veil on me, so, but I think that they are, yeah, I think that they're gonna be just fine. Um, look at my valerian, it is so pretty. I, I am so blown away that I was able to keep this thing alive. So, gorgeous, gorgeous valerian. Cannot wait to see what it looks like, all big and strong and going to flower. And then the fever few, that little flower that I was showing you guys. We will, this one will be very pretty as well. We're going to do some harvesting, um, harvesting again. I was excited about this little plant right here because we planted it a few years back from some cuttings um, from our herbal school teacher, Teresa, at Green Comfort School of Herbal Medicine. I get that, I get asked quite often about where I went to school, but these plants came from her, and this is Shazandra. So, so Shazandra berry is what, the berry is what we're gonna be using. And it's, a, it's another lovely adaptogen. I can't wait to see if we can harvest some berries. We have not been able to yet, but I'm hoping that this is going to grow up and over this archway and I have more plants on the other side. So this more to come, more to come. And as I'm over here talking about plants, we got a swarm of honeybees. Yep, that's that's what we got. I gotta go suit up. We've got a couple of minutes of them settling. So what I, I also wanna show you, this is the life of a beekeeper homesteader. Hey, we got a swarm. We do? Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this video and then start another one and <laughs> go catch go catch the swarm. It's time. It's time. Um, but look, I also have a yarrow patch. Um, the warrior, the warrior herb. We're gonna talk about yarrow. I'm excited. I gotta go suit up. I'm gonna go catch some, I'm gonna go catch some feelings. I'll document the swarm catch and um, you'll see this video to come. So, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.